understanding physical and stress symptoms. This video explains how your physical symptoms can be made worse by stress. Gaining information and tips from this video can be your first step in understanding and managing these physical and stress symptoms. This is Billy. Billy has been getting headaches recently. It has become so bad that he often takes medicines for his pain. And he has missed school occasionally because of his headaches. His parents brought him to the doctor to get his headaches checked up. The doctor said medical investigations show that his headaches are unlikely something to worry about. But she would like to monitor Billy's condition further. What is somatization? Somatization refers to physical health symptoms caused or made worse by stress. It is a way our body shows feelings and can occur with or without an accompanying medical condition. This happens because of the mind-body connection. Hmm? What is the mind-body connection? Many people think the mind and body are separate, but actually, the mind and body are constantly communicating with each other. Yes. Physical symptoms can affect our feelings. Like when we have a really bad headache, we can feel sad and grumpy because of the pain. Similarly, our emotions can also affect our bodies. Like how when we are nervous, we shiver or our stomachs churn. Or how when we are angry or embarrassed, our faces turn red. We sometimes experience headaches, chest pains, stomach aches or other types of physical discomfort. These symptoms can occur because of a medical condition but they can also occur because of our emotions. So, the next time you experience these symptoms and get worried it might be a medical condition, mm -hmm. don't forget that emotional stress also has a part to play in causing these symptoms and can prolong or worsen physical symptoms. How does stress affect my physical symptoms? Our thoughts, our emotions, and our behaviours are all interconnected to the physical symptoms we experience. When Billy experiences headaches, it makes him and his family think that something may be wrong. Oh no! Their concerns about the headaches can also cause Billy to feel stress. And the stress then affects his body, making his headaches worse. When we feel anxious or stressed, our bodies release stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. These hormones easily reach our blood vessels and heart, putting our bodies into a stress mode. Our hearts beat faster, our blood pressure increases, our muscles tense up, our stomachs may churn and we feel dizzy. We then become more sensitive to any slight changes in our body and any physical symptoms become more magnified. As we start noticing our headaches more, we get so worried that it affects our behaviour. We may prefer staying in bed instead of going to school. However, staying in bed too much can make our stamina go down and make us feel more tired instead. Parents, in their worry, may repeatedly look for different medical opinions. But this can cause confusion and even more worry. Oh dear. Putting it all together, our own worry thoughts, our emotional response to stress and anxiety, becoming more sensitive and paying more attention to physical symptoms and avoiding things we normally do when we are a little unwell can make things worse. This becomes a vicious cycle. We start feeling tired, sensitive and worried about our physical symptoms. Our brain detects all this worry and switches our body into stress mode, making us feel even more sensitive to any symptoms we have. Children's self-help you can try several coping strategies to manage your symptoms. Engage in pleasant activities that can help distract you from symptoms and relieve emotional stress. Deep breathing slows down heart rate and lowers blood pressure. Your mind takes a break from worries when you focus on your breathing. Breathe in for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 4 seconds. Breathe out for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 4 seconds. 
Practice this box breathing exercise for a few minutes every day. Our muscles can become tense when we feel stressed or anxious. We then experience physical sensations like chest tightness and tension headaches. Progressive muscle relaxation can help release muscle tension. Imagine you have two lemons in each hand. Clench your fists tightly like you're squeezing the lemons to make lemon juice. Now, relax your hands. Next, imagine taking a large gulp of the lemon juice you just made. Mm -hmm. Scrunch up your face like you drank something very sour. Now, relax and release all the tension in your face. Next, imagine you are a turtle hiding your head in your shell. Pull your head tightly into your shoulders and bring your shoulders up as closely to your ears as you can. Now, relax. Next, let's pretend you're trying to fit into an extra small pair of jeans. Suck your tummy in as much as you can and tighten your stomach muscles. Relax. Next, imagine trying to grab a towel with your toes. Curl your toes downwards and push your feet to the ground. Now, relax. Finally, take a deep breath in and mentally scan your body for any leftover muscle tension. Release any tension in your body and relax. Practice progressive muscle relaxation to reduce stress and tension. Sometimes, we have unhelpful thoughts in difficult situations. These thoughts are often not true and cause even more stress. Instead of letting these thoughts overwhelm us, saying coping statements to ourselves during stressful situations can help us feel much better. Stress is something we will unavoidably face in our everyday lives, so it is important that we consistently practice our coping strategies. To help you master these coping strategies, we've built your very own coping toolbox to help you cope with physical and stress symptoms. Pause the video and scan the QR code or log on to the web link to access your very own coping toolbox now. How parents can support children Follow appropriate medical advice Keep in mind what your doctor has said to look out for medically and when to seek medical help. At the same time, parents should be mindful not to place excessive attention on symptoms. Avoid placing excessive attention on symptoms. It is natural for parents to check on children who are unwell. Are you okay? However, excessive attention places too much emphasis on the symptoms. Just as children have taken their attention off symptoms, a well-intentioned parent comes along and refocuses all their attention back to their struggles with questions like, How are you feeling? Is the pain still there? Parents and caregivers can ask something else, such as What have you learned in school? Or Are you planning to do anything fun later? Yes. Encourage children to focus on something else other than the physical symptoms, as unnecessary attention to symptoms can often make the symptoms worse. Encourage and reinforce positive coping strategies. Do them together as a family. Avoid allowing children to miss their daily routine and activities. When children are allowed to skip usual activities, such as going to school, we are unknowingly allowing them to avoid the stressful situation. Allowing children to relax at home and spend time with parents instead can make it harder for them to return to their usual routines. Encourage usual activities. Instead, Carry on with daily activities like going to school or having family meals. Avoid solving problems for children. If a caregiver jumps in immediately to help whenever children express worry or frustration, they do not learn to manage their own distress. Although very well intentioned, children do not get opportunities to learn how to problem solve. Instead, 
Guide them by helping to explore different ways that might help solve problems. Avoid dismissing children's pain. Avoid making dismissive statements, <laughs> which may be intuitive, but unhelpful because children end up suffering through symptoms alone without guidance. Saying, It's all in your head. Sends the message that symptoms are well within children's control. In fact, these symptoms are unintentional and often not controllable. These physical symptoms are real, biologically based, and distressing. Sometimes, a test at school, combined with an overwhelmed body, can be enough to cause symptoms. It can also result in a slow build-up of emotions and a tense body over time. Identify and manage external stresses. Allow time for children to share with you openly. Be curious and ask questions about their experiences. Avoid taking a black and white approach to manage symptoms. Refrain from making statements like If you have symptoms, stay at home. Or If you don't have symptoms, go to school. Caregivers and children should adopt a more flexible approach. It may be more helpful to explore strategies that children can use when in school. Avoid overexerting children. Caregivers may inadvertently encourage children to push themselves too hard. Are you ready? This sends the message to children that they are not working hard enough to use their coping skills. This may also cause children to overdo activities, which can increase symptoms. Like running, when children are excited and motivated to regain functioning, they may push themselves really hard at the start but overexerting can completely tire them out, resulting in them being unable to run again for the next few days. Avoid questions that may discourage usual activities. The answer for children struggling with physical symptoms to questions about engaging daily activities is almost always going to be no. no! Instead, caregivers can support function by jointly exploring choices around how children can manage their symptoms or remind them of rewards for positive functioning. This maintains confidence in children's abilities and provides encouragement and support. Avoid asking discouraging questions about children's efforts to cope with their physical symptoms. That can make children think that they have failed if the strategy they had used did not work for them. Instead, you can encourage and affirm them. Sympathetic statements may be natural, but a lack of guidance thereafter can also be unhelpful in helping children cope with physical symptoms. Instead, caregivers can acknowledge the symptoms and encourage children to use the coping strategies they have learned. Avoid showing too much worry. When caregivers show a lot of distress over children's symptoms, it makes the symptoms scarier for them. This tells children that there is something very wrong and can cause even more distress to them. Caregivers should take the lead in managing their own distress and reactions to children's symptoms. Managing symptoms as a family There are things we can do as a family to encourage a healthy lifestyle. Being sick might make us not want to do things that help keep us healthy, like getting enough sleep, eating right, exercising regularly, and staying hydrated. If we hold off doing these healthy things for a while, our bodies may forget to signal us to start doing them again. A healthy lifestyle is a valuable resource for coping with life stresses and reducing health problems. Exercise Aim for regular exercise. Regular exercise can help reduce pain and improve your mood. Sleep Children undergoing lots of stress often feel worse in the morning and better in the afternoon and evening. This leads to a pattern of waking later or napping in the day, which causes problems falling asleep at night. Or they may have problems falling asleep, leading to them waking up later. This all leads to a disruption in sleep routine. Hence, there is a need to have a routine to regulate our bodies. Aim to have enough hours of sleep. Avoid napping. Try to keep to a consistent bedtime and wake-up time. Have a peaceful sleep environment. Hydration It is important to keep hydrated throughout the day. 
Aim to drink 2 liters of water daily. Avoid caffeine and sugary drinks. Nutrition Healthy eating is an important element of physical and mental well-being. The Health Promotion Board has designed an easy-to-understand guide to portion food types. It suggests that half your plate be filled with fruits and vegetables, a quarter filled with whole grains, and a quarter filled with meat or protein. Aim for two servings of fish each week. Do refer to Health Promotion Board's My Healthy Plate for more ideas on healthy snacks and serving sizes. An irregular eating pattern can cause changes in blood sugar levels, which can result in tiredness and affect our mood. Oh no! This may worsen symptoms. Some children with stress-induced symptoms may be picky eaters and have long-standing nutritional issues. Consider getting a dietitian or doctor's advice if you are concerned about your child's nutritional status. In summary, somatization refers to physical health symptoms caused or made worse by stress. It can occur with or without a medical condition. This happens because our minds and bodies are connected. Our physical symptoms may make us avoid doing things we usually do, but these can make symptoms worse. Children can practice self-help strategies to reduce these physical symptoms, and parents play an important role to support recovery by using the right coping strategies. Now that you've learned more about somatization, start practicing these coping strategies today!